Our next speaker is Hai Shen Fu. Um, Hai Shen, for the last year or so, has been director of, Deve of the Development Data Group in the World Bank. And she's also a member of the Independent Expert Advisory Group on the Data Revolution for Development, um, which is, as many of you know, part of the planning process for beyond uh, 2015 in terms of the next, the next stage of the MDGs. Haishan has had um, a rich career to date, mainly focused in the UN. Um, I first got to know her when she was working at UNDP, and then subsequently she became director of the statistics division at the UN Economic uh, and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, based in Bangkok. Um, Haishan, would you like to tell us yours, your views, please? Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Denise. And uh, what a hard act to follow, Ken. Now you know who <laughs> made it to TED. <laughs> uh, yeah, indeed, I'm from the World Bank. Um, as a development uh, agency, we see ourselves really straddle um, between uh, official statistics and uh, big data, so to speak. Um, for so many years, we have been curating, compiling, development data based on what produced in the national statistical systems. Uh, and more recently, through open data, uh, we have really widened our reach. Just last year, 21 million visits to the open data website, um, about over 40% of all visits to the World Bank uh, website. So really, there's a clear need for that kind of data. And but of course, on that front, we're struggling with still um, gaps, um, and uh, time lag and, and uh, accuracy. Just taking uh, poverty data, for example, you know, 57 countries that we don't have data at all or only have one data point over the last 10 years. So hard to say we really have poverty headcounts when we really don't count properly. Second, um, just recently, the bank um, organized a big data innovation challenge because beyond the national level statistics we're, we're disseminating, there's a real need for different kind of data to really guide the programs and monitor progress and when we engage with countries. And among the 100 also proposals, there are 30 of them got the, the challenge award and really get, get on with their work. But the, the kind of uh, challenges or the proposal really reflect what we're struggling with. For example, how to use CDR data to fill data gaps if we can indeed uh, measure poverty or inequality. How we use satellite data to help inform farmers in the Philippines you know, for the rice production. How we can use um, uh, GPS data or you know, taxi ride to inform you know, improvement for, for city trans transportation management, so on and so forth. So there's a wide range of challenges we're facing. And we really want to see the official statistics side and the big data side come together so we will be able to have the right kind of information at the right time for the right kind of decisions we're going to make. Let's just give you one example that for the kind of compelling opportunities we're looking into, how to fill data gaps, how to increase the efficiency of our statistical operation, and how to get new measurement so that we can really inform government and, uh, and, and citizens. Since Ken is sitting next right to me, I, it reminds me of the light-hearted uh, Big Mac index. Um, it, it's based on the same notion of this uh, international comparison program we have just concluded last year. It took us four years to gather 7 million price statistics in 199 countries across eight regions with 15 partners, not mentioning all the national statistical offices that are involved. Eventually, this is indeed one of the most successful and largest statistical operations globally. But the data we could release last year refers to 2011. So definitely, this is one area as a great example of how we can use the new technology and, and working together with the private sector and, and continue to engage with the National Statistical Office to improve the way we gather this very critical statistics so it will be coming out much more timely and, and much more accurate. I, I guess this is the kind of uh, broad opportunities we're looking into, and they are really at the heart of the data revolution we're talking about. And uh, indeed, I was very um, fortunate to be in this uh, UNSD um, independent advisory group on data revolution for sustainable development. I think what's, what's 
comes out of that is very um, clear. That is, when we're talking about improving official statistics and harnessing the potential of uh, big data, we really need to continue to look into how to best support national statistical offices to transform itself while engaging with the private sector data producers uh, through new private-public partnership. We also need to also focus on uh, um, capacity development while collectively innovate to see how we can really improve the way we measure. And at the same time, I think it's, it's a really good time now that we treat opposition development data as a development agenda in its own right, and we invest properly. Part of the reasons why the National Statistical Office, given how central they are in the whole democratic and governance process, and cannot fully meet the challenge, part of it is indeed they have not been really um, uh, properly pro um, uh, resourced in order to really meet all the challenges coming their way. So I think what we're facing now is how to motivate the official statistical system to embrace the new opportunities, but also how to incentivize the private sector to come together so we can really um, build a new uh, private-public partnership, build on certain agreed rules of the game so that we can share data more easily and sustainably. We can transfer our information between the, uh, link our information across different sources, and we can also make our data much more useful and usable through open data initiatives. And here I, I see there are already some very good examples from the private sector side. As you know, Orange has, has conducted two open um, data challenge in, in, in Africa countries, sharing their um, uh, mobile phone records to address some of the uh, policy issues. Uh, we also know recently Uber uh, has agreed that uh, to provide quarterly anonymized data to the city of Boston uh, of, of the time and, um, and the, the start and ending and, and some other information related to those taxi rides in order to help the city to improve um, their transportation management. Of course, you can say this perhaps only will lead to incremental improvement in a well-developed city of Boston. But we also know Uber operates in Logos, Logos uh, Nigeria, and in some other developing countries and big cities. This kind of services is really having great market potential. So that will become a very good data sources for us to, to really understand the patterns of people's mobility and, and improve our transportation system. So this is only one example, but I'm very hopeful that you know, if we have the vision and the determination to really engage with each other, we'll be able to build the kind of partnership necessary. Now this leads to my last question, uh, points, that is indeed uh, looking into the potential of big data. One might argue you know, the potential for the poor countries or low income countries to benefit from that it is relatively large or maybe even greater than some of the established statistical systems. Indeed, um, I think th there's a great deal of uh, opportunities, but at the same time, these are also where the ground choosing data are lacking because those are the countries that have not developed the proper national statistical system to provide the kind of benchmarks we need. So I think the, the challenge is really twofold. How we support countries to build their basic statistical capacity and also the democratic institutions will allow them to harness and leverage the big potential of new data sources and, and have the right partnership. So I think um, this is indeed an incredible challenge we're facing together, but I think we will be able to do it. Because on my way here, I was catching up on my readings. Um, so the double holiday issue of Economist, you might have something to do with that. It featured a story. Um, it's called uh, How Statistic, statist, Statisticians Change the War and How the War Changed Statistics in the UK. It not, not only highlighted the intellectual leadership of some of the prominent leading statisticians, but also gave uh, prominence to the kind of self-effacing collaboration between statisticians, industrialists, factory workers, government officials, and researchers. And, and in the broader war effort, and with the democratic spirit followed the war, how statistics has prospered. So I think if history is a reference, now we're actually in a much 
better position with the kind of enabling technology on our side, so we won't have excuse for not really pursuing this public-private partnership to have a better development data system we have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Haishan.